some more broken stuff on this shop truck uh it's $800 shop truck I had to replace the radio because it didn't exist and I powered the truck up to make sure that the radio was working and I heard it clicking under the dash. Pulled the side cover off and sure enough it is the recirc door that uh, wasn't too happy. I noticed the blend door uh, gears were actually kind of misaligned so I pushed that down and that fixed that so I don't got to deal with that. But I've got the clicking going on for the recirc door. If you get the recirc door on and it's sucking air from inside the car inside of the dash um, it works just fine it opens all the way up and you get air working the problem is that it, when you select the outside air feature the blend door or the research door closes and then clicks closed perpetually so you're stuck with inside the cab air all the time sometimes you want that sometimes you don't i found the actuator it's right here but it looks like an absolute pain to get to so i found the tiniest wrench that I own and we're gonna try to get it out of there so here inside of the dash you've got this little module right here so we got to pull a little blue tab and clip out and we need to get to that screw right there and there's one on the back side right about there I don't know how you're gonna get to it uh, without pulling the dash out but uh, yeah, this is gonna be an absolute pain. I try to do my best to film this. There's no way that I'm gonna get my big camera up inside there, so I'm actually shooting on my phone today. There we go. So now we'll get our super tiny, this one just happens to be a 730 seconds. We're just gonna sit here and pull this, pull this screw out. I don't know how I'm gonna get to the one in the back though. I, I genuinely don't know. My fat hands and this little tiny spot here. All right, pretty much got the first one out. That was the easy one. I just so happen to have a 730 seconds socket and I'm gonna try and get this thing shoved way the heck and gone up in there so I can show you guys exactly where that uh, screw actually lives. You can reach up there and feel it, but it's up there. I hope this shows you guys just how far up in there this thing is. This is nearly, nearly inaccessible, but we got it on there, so let's try to get this screw out. Oh no. This freaking thing is absolutely in the way. I'm cutting the heck out of the back of my hand. You guys can see the lines right there. This is not, I mean, this is better than pulling the dash out, but holy crap, guys. All right, once I get this out, I'll show you guys what, I, what I'm up to. I don't even care. I'm bending it. Figure out a way of getting this bent all the way around. Awesome, I just made a little sharp point there instead of out here. Fantastic. Bending that tab up was absolutely the best thing I could have done. I probably should have done that first. And uh, I'm just gonna recommend you guys to do that first. So bend that tab so you can get a little bit more room and not cut up the back of your hand. I dropped the socket. So now I gotta find it. That socket's gone. I don't freaking know where it went. But uh, I do have a 5.5 and another 730 seconds. So we're just going to see what works and figure out where I put the other screw. 5.5 mil is the size of the uh, head, or 730 seconds fits pretty dang good. That's what I dropped back there. So I'll try to use this 5.5 and see if I can get up in there and get. That little screw right there. All right, I ditched the wrench and I'm literally holding the socket right now, spinning it with my fingers. There you go. So now I got those two bolts out, that actuator should 
come out. I'm gonna pull it straight to the side of the vehicle. There you go. That's what she is. So these actuators are uh, found on a whole bunch of different vehicles. I think like Cobalts and Saturn Skies and all sorts of crazy GM products. And uh, these over time fail uh, at this exact same way. So I'm curious if these older trucks or as these trucks get older, this is going to be a part that we're going to see fail a little bit more often. So let me get this cover off of here and I'll show you guys what's inside and we'll figure out why it's clicking. All right, I've got the clips wiggled off. Don't know which side I want, but I think this needs to go down. So the white protrusion, the, uh, yeah, the uh, truck side, not the fender side. Um, needs to go down when we're lifting this off and let's see what died found it main gear duty left the chat i had a dumb idea i jumped online and i was looking for 3d print files to print that new gear but i got to thinking about it this blend door this research door only moves about 90 degrees or so why can't we just flip the unit, the, the gear, backwards? So I was thinking about this gear. Um, this thing sits kind of like that in the, uh, in the little gear housing. And it has to rotate maybe 90 degrees to get that research door to open and close. I was thinking about it. Why can't I just flip it upside down where there's no teeth busted and this thing can do its thing there. So I think what I'm going to do actually is figure out where this went and then turn it upside down and I'm going to try, try and throw a couple volts at this thing to see if I can get this blend door to work. So I might have fixed this for free. So this is how it sits right now. You guys can see that's where it was with the busted teeth, right? So what if I turn this, without this gear falling out of here, what if I turn this guy 180 degrees? Doing this one hand is an absolute pain. This pin usually sits inside of this little black cog here, so um, that's no good. But now, it basically sits 180 degrees out and shouldn't theoretically have any issues with uh, these busted off teeth. Alright, this is about as sloppy as I can get it. You got a mark that I just put on there just to show me where it's supposed to be right now. I got my 9 volt here, and let's, I don't know if I can touch this and show you guys at the same time, but I'm going to touch it. Man, this phone. Sorry guys, I really wish I could do all this on my big camera, but. Look at that. She's moving. All right, switch the leads up. All right. There you go. The motor's not toast. It's just the gears snapped off. So I'm going to now get this back into place, attempt to put both screws back into place and plug this in. And then I guess when I leave for Moab in two days or when I get the motor in this truck and when I get uh, this thing running back again um, I guess we'll find out if that works officially so uh, yeah let me put this back in and I'll show you guys it installed I guess get this guy up inside here we 
wish I could show you guys this. This is, there you go. See, I'm moving the whole actuator. So it's indexed now. It's right where the screws need to go. So I'll get those screws in. That's not right. <laughs> yeah, there's absolutely no room up here. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Get back. I really hope I never have to do this again. Legitimately the smallest wrench I own. And the cavity I definitely don't fit in. I place a part that GM should have never put here. Or should have made made a better part. Before I snug that one down, I'm going to get to the back one back there, and that requires this guy and this guy. Good old Pittsburgh. <laughs> now what am I going to do? Alright, I got this thing finally tightened up, despite exploding my wrench. But let's throw some voltage to the plug there and see if we can get this uh, door to move. Okay. We got this there. I'm gonna attempt to do this one-handed while filming. Like that. No clicking. Let me switch the polarity and we'll run this guy back. All right, got that. Let's touch it. And we're closing. <laughs> money there you guys go GM research door for Colorado's I think uh, I think they went to like the solstice and uh, a whole bunch of vehicles got this blend door research door actuator uh, throughout the kind of mid 2000s and so I'm pretty sure this will apply to a bunch of vehicles I'll end up probably tagging a whole bunch of different types of vehicles in the video description so that if you are searching for this and you don't have a Colorado you'll uh, obviously know what to do um, the access and uh, whatnot probably will be different depending on the vehicle but as far as flipping that gear backwards I can't see why that wouldn't work on your vehicle so if this fix worked for you uh, would you guys consider subscribing um, I enjoy helping you guys out and giving you guys free videos on how to fix your cars um, and saving you money this is a 70 or 80 dollar part so if you can just get to it and flip the gear around and uh, save yourself the 75 bucks do you think that's worth a subscription to the channel if uh, if so I'd really appreciate it um, with that I need to get this thing built into Moab in like two days so thanks for watching